the word is Pastor Sabado. Remember, Brent, I'd like to greet everyone who is connected with us, Church of Houston, Marietta, Port St. Lucie, and the remaining brethren with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I'm going to open the word of the Lord tonight. In Psalm 37, 5 and 7. Thus says the word of our Lord. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. And now verse 7. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for Him. My brethren, the words of the Lord, and this text specifically, was written by David. And on those verses that we have just read, like the entire Psalm 37, and it speaks of, of the difference between, between the ones who serve the Lord and the ones who don't serve the Lord, of the unfaithful and the one who has been made righteous by the Lord. In that case, the righteous. And the word of the Lord says that the Lord that we serve is great in advice and magnificent in power and here is an advice why because we all have free will to choose the path that we need to take the direction that we need to take the lord gave us this freedom to choose what we think it's best for us but the word says my brethren that there are ways that seem safe, but their end is will lead to death. And But the desire of the Lord is that every man will be saved and may have eternal life. So David here, used by the Lord, he was used in order to give us advice. He was used to show to us the direction, a destination, a target that we need to take. And the word says the following. Give your path to the Lord. Every man has a path. We are born and throughout our trajectory, our life, our walk. We choose or we build for us a path. And as I mentioned before, many times we think it's a good path. But every path from man points to death, points out to the tomb. That's why here we have this advice. Give your path to the Lord. But my brother, if you give a path that you trace for your life to the Lord, then what path you will be walking on? What is the direction that you're going to take? And when we give our path to the Lord it is because the Lord has for me, for you, for each one of us a new and living path uh, once an apostle Jesus a disciple called Thomas he was already walking with Jesus he had seen signs and wonders and miracles he had already left his own path and now he's walking beside the Lord the Master and how wonderful it is for men to make this choice, to, to make this decision, walking with the Lord, walking with God. In the beginning of the Bible, it says that an individual called Enoch, in the Bible, of says that the years of the life of Enoch was 365 days, actually 365 years. We know that every four years we have 365 days. And what does it mean? It means that Enoch walked with the God every day of his life. The Bible says that Enoch walked with God. It was no longer sin because the Lord took him, him to himself. Enoch didn't even experience death. He, he went straight to eternal life because he walked with God all the days of his life. And Thomas, he was walking with God. He was walking with Jesus. And once Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a path for you, a place for you. And Thomas became worried, and he said, Lord, 
Where are you going? How are we going to walk with you? Do we have to follow you? Because disciples, they are followers, like Christians are followers of Christ. So he was following Christ. He was a disciple of Jesus. He wanted to know how he would be able to follow the Lord if he didn't know the path. In fact, he already knew the path. But he was not able to discern the path with, with, in which he was being guided, which was the path of the Lord, a new and living path. And the Lord speak, goes to him and says, Thomas, I am the path. Whoever walks in me, whoever serves me, will never walk in darkness. I am the path and truth and the life. So at that moment, the Lord Jesus opens up the eyes of Thomas regarding the path that he was already walking. He was already walking with God, but he didn't have the understanding regarding the place that the Lord had already placed him to walk, which was the path of going to lead to eternity. He was already with Jesus. And the Bible also says that in the time of Jesus, there was a man on the side of the road. And the Lord didn't call men to be on, on the side of the road or on another path. The Lord actually called men to walk on the path, and the path is Christ. He was, this man was not walking to that point because he was crippled. But when he walked on the path, a line, the light was shown to him. He was able to see and follow Jesus. And there is a, even a song that the children sing about the the Bartimaeus, the blind Bartimaeus. The word of the Lord says the following: "Give your way to the Lord." There is a song that says, "I will give everything to the Lord." And what it is to give your way to the Lord? It is to give everything: your dreams, your thoughts, your feelings, your objectives, your targets. The servant from the past, Peter. One day he said, came to the Lord and says, I left everything to walk on the path, everything to serve you. What, are we, what is going to be our reward? And Jesus makes a promise. He gives a word to the ones who had left everything to serve Christ or to walk with Christ, to be on the path of Christ. He said, you will receive 100 times what we had in your life and your eternal life. And so this is the reward to the ones who leave their own path in order to then walk on the path that God has prepared for his life. It's a new and living path, but it is necessary to let go. And it's necessary for you to deposit and to give it completely. And many times we don't do this. We don't do this complete giving to the Lord and unconditional to the Lord. But the vice of the Lord is, is this. Give a path to the Lord because we cannot walk in two paths. We cannot split ourselves. There's no way for you to walk on, on your path and then on the Lord's path. You either walk on your path or on Lord's path. But in order for you to stop walking on your path, you need to make a stand. You need to make a choice. You need to accept the advice of the Lord. And as I said, God, the Lord is great in advice and magnificent in power. And when we accept the advice from the Lord to our lives, and we walk according to His statutes, the Lord is the one that has ordered for our lives wonderful things, one, glorious things are going to happen with our lives. And that's what the psalmist David says regarding this. So if we walk the trajectory of David, the life of David, the path that David himself chose to conduct himself, we who see that David was prosperous in everything. He was blessed in everything. He had many trials, difficulties, adversities, but in everything he was victorious. The word of the Lord said the following, we are more than victorious in Christ. Amen. And, and he, he will trans, transfer his kingdom in life. And we see this rewards that David received because he walked on the way of the Lord. So here 
he gives to us this advice, commit your way to the Lord. It's not commit my way to the pastor or commit my way to a politician or to a powerful person, a person that is wise or intelligent, a person that knows uh, or commit your my way to man. Because the Bible says that curse is man who believes in the trust of man. But when I commit my way to the Lord and in the way that David expresses here, it says, commit your way to the Lord. And he also says, trust. It is to commit with confidence, with assurance, with conviction. It is to commit your life to the Lord without any restriction and without any doubt is to give your life to the Lord completely, like I said in the beginning, is to trust. Because the word says, trust comes from faith. So the word says that without faith is impossible to please God. And the ones who come close to the Lord is necessary for them to believe that He exists and to believe that He has all the power and authority on heaven and on earth to act in our lives on our behalf and on our to our benefit so we need to commit it with confidence and walk with faith Enoch he walked by faith like the song that says by faith I walk only looking towards Jesus is to enter on the path and never to go astray to the left or to the right when I enter onto the path and if I deviate my gaze to the left or to the right, what happens? I'm going to fall. The word of the Lord speaks about this. 1,000 are going to fall to your side and 10,000 to your right, but you're never going to be hit. With your eyes, you only see the reward of the righteous. And there's a verse in the Bible that says, this is the path, walk on it. When you hear the voice of the Lord, you see the path, you have a direction, a north a target for your life. The advice is this, walk in Him without deviating from the right to the right or to the left. So in other words, without changing the direction or to walk with security or assurance or conviction with faith on the presence of the Lord. So he says the following, commit your way to the Lord. The first thing is to give, to commit your way, to commit my life to the Lord. You need to do this. My my commitment is complete without any restriction. And it is a decision without any return. So if I have a, an object here and I give it to someone else, I cannot pick it, take it back because I already gave it. I already made this decision. The word of the Lord says the following. Say either yes, yes, or no, no. If I gave my life to the Lord, that's it. There's no way to go back. So, And the word says... If he goes back on it, my soul has no pleasure in him. So if you del if you commit it, that's it. From that point forward, oh, I'm not going to wa live in the way I was. From that mo moment forward, I will live according to God wants. So commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him. You need to have conviction and faith. I'm going to say once again, it is without faith impossible to please the Lord, and He shall bring it to pass. So when you make this decision to commit your way to the Lord, everything else, all your personal goods, everything that you possess, and when you give it all to the Lord with confidence, with faith, what is going to happen? God is going to be acting on your behalf and to your benefit. But this is necessary. You need to first commit it to the Lord and He will do all things. And when we look into the word of the Lord, when you take the Psalm 23, He says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Why does it say, I shall not want? Because God will do all things to my on my behalf and to my benefit. So, when we you see the meeting of, between Jacob and Esau, Jacob said, I have enough. And 
Jacob didn't receive the blessing from Esau because he said, I have everything. Why? Because God, he, he took a stand in the presence of the Lord. You see in the book of Genesis, when he take on a commitment with the Lord, and from that moment forward, he walked on the path that the Lord had prepared for him. And, one, and later on, when he meets with his brother, he says, I don't need anything because God did everything to his behalf and to his benefit. God provided all things for him. Why? Because he gave his life with faith, with assurance, with conviction. He gave it to the God that can, could do everything on his benefit. That could do everything for his life. And we see this illustrated in the Lord Jesus and everything. He did everything to the benefit of man. For, from the creation of man, of the world all the way to the possibility of you and I and all of us to enter through the gates of eternity. If we commit our lives, we accept the plan of God, the project of God, and we trust on this project and trust on this God that introduced to us this project, this God opened for us this new living path. If we walk, we'll receive all things like Jesus himself said, 100 times the ones who receive in this life. But if you want it only for all, for this life, we're the most miserable creatures. And then he completes in the, the the eternal life, eternity with God will be given to you, a new heaven, a new earth, where there is no crying, there is no shouting, and there is no pain. Give your path to the Lord and trust in Him. And to finish it off, he says, rest rest and many times we do not rest we commit our way to the lord we trust on the lord but we do not rest we have a project we make a plea a supplication a prayer to the lord we know who god is we offer our life to the lord but we do not rest and that is the greatest problem that we have the greatest problem of humanity that do not rest on the Lord. And God created Jesus for this purpose. Jesus generated for this to give rest to each one of us. And Jesus said, you will find rest for your souls. And today is a s Saturday. Today is a day of rest. S Saturday is a day for you to rest your physical body. And that's why Jesus said, I am greater than Saturday. We, the ones who are rest, uh, tired and overloaded, come to me because I'm going to give you relief. I'm going to give you rest and you find rest to your soul. Man, at this moment, is has a tired soul. And why is that? Because he has not given his path, has not trusted on the Lord, and has not rested on the presence of the Lord so that the Lord may act on his life, on his behalf, on his, to his benefit. And so rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. I waited patiently to the Lord and he brought down his ear and heard my plea. So the Lord heard, gave us an answer and acted on my benefit. He operated so that I could receive a reward, so that I could receive a relief, so that I could receive a refreshing, a healing, a deliverance, salvation, Christ Jesus, and prosperity also here on earth, is when man does those things, he gives it, he trusts, and then he rests. God acts, God operates, and God manifests his power. God uses of mercy towards our lives and God will do all things so that you my brother and sister so that I and each one of us may have a life a full life and blessed here on earth and on heaven and eternal life and that's the difference between the ones who give their lives and trust on the Lord and wait on the Lord and rest on the Lord and the life of the ones who do not give their life to the Lord do not trust on the Lord, and do not rest on the Lord, and do not wait on the Lord. So my way will lead towards death. My 
but it was pleasing to the Lord to send His Son so that I could live now His eternity, to leave His project so that I could enter into this new and living way. Amen. So now let us sing a song to the Lord and later on we're going to give assistance. So I'm going to finish the service of glorification to the name of our God. Não desesperes, espera em Deus Que Ele vem, que Ele vem te socorrer Alma cansada, não desesperes, espera em Deus Espera em Deus, espera em Deus E no Seu poder Espera em Deus e no Seu amor Vem, alma cansada Espera em Deus, confia somente no Seu amor O teu lamento não resolverá A hora é triste, com fé insiste Deus te ouvirá Se teus momentos trazem tormentos Que fazem chorar Deus te chama agora Ó oh, bem sem demora Em paz descansar Espera em Deus e no Seu amor Vem, alma cansada Espera em Deus, confia somente no Seu amor Remember, brethren, the Lord was showing in service tonight some man that was on the path and he had difficulty to remain on the path because he could not see clearly and discern the limits of the, this path. And tonight, an uh, eye drop was placed on the eye of this man. He was able to discern clearly and walk with security. And that's exactly the plan and the pro pur purpose of the Lord. When we serve the Lord, He wants us to serve Him with clarity and that we're able to see the things in the way that they are. And there was a man there in the past and Jesus went to heal him. And He, saw, and he said, I see men as trees, but man was man and tree is a tree. And then he prayed with him and laying of hand. And he asked once again, What do you see, my friend? Now I can see people clearly. Because when he was in the town, he was involved in the things of the town. His path was still split. He was seeing things partially. But when he gets out of the place, 
when he was only him and Jesus, he was able to discern clearly all the plan, all the project. A light was shown, and he could now see from afar, and he could see eternity. And this is the purpose of God for your life, especially my brother and sister, so that you can see with clarity far away and that you can see with your eyes and see eternity that the Lord has prepared especially for your life. That's why the text tonight, give a path to the Lord. You're already on the path. You have made a radiant option. You made a choice. You made a decision in your life. Accept that Jesus as your only sufficient Savior. You're on the path with Jesus. So you are now you're on a new and living path. But salvation is dynamic. It's not static. It's not saved, once saved forever. This is the path. Walk on it. But in order for you to walk on this path, we need to trust on the Lord. Trust in whom? Trust in the Lord. Trust on the Lord. Amen? So the faith and the firm foundation of the things that cannot be seen, but the proof of the things that we are waiting for, and everything else will be added unto you. He's going to do everything for your life. He's going to give you salvation, all the benefits, because the Lord also knows that you need the material things in order to survive. And all of this will be provided, provided by Him. It's not you who are going to, who is going to do this. He's the one who is going to do it. And we're not going to do one, two, or three things. We're going to do everything, and everything else will be added onto you. And when you accept Jesus in your life, One of the characteristics of the servant of God, a Christian in Jesus, of the one who trusts on the Lord, you know what it is? It is when you give away to the Lord, you say that you believe, and what happens? You rest on the Lord. The servant of the Lord that believes in Jesus will rest on the Lord, and he will wait on the Lord because he knows that the Lord will provide who care for him. He will provide all things that are necessary for his life. And that's the plan and the project of God. And God, once again, I would like to repeat once again, his great and advised and magnificent in power. And you, my brother and sister, you see the plan and the project that the Lord has set aside for you. But now you need to trust because without faith it's impossible to please the Lord. Amen. Let's finish, Lord. We we'll praise you and thankful for this moment that we have enjoyed in fellowship with you. And we ask that your grace and your love and your mercy may continue, Lord, upon each one of our servants, protecting, delivering them from an infirmity, from the violence, from the unemployment, from this pandemic, and Lord, hiding them from the snare of the enemy, or don't allow them to take another direction, which is not a direction that we provided for us. And for our lives, and that your Holy Spirit may continue speaking with us. This is the way, walk in it without going straight to the left or to the right. And this is the desire. Our desire is to meet with you in eternity. Bless your people, give an item of peace in your presence, manifest your power and grace and mercy with, upon each one of your servants and their families and their businesses so that they see you, your hand acting, operating for their benefit. This is a service that we're offering to you in the name of Jesus. And we, name, we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and our good and eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be with the entire people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen, my brethren. The service is over, and to all the peace of the Lord. If the brethren desire to greet one another, you can open a microphone. And if anybody needs an assistant, we are here at your disposal. Pai do Senhor, Sueli. Pai do Senhor. Senhor João. Pai do Senhor, Pai do Senhor, irmão. Pai do Senhor. Senhor Shirley. Pai do Senhor. Breve, breve saímos na igreja, hein?
Tia Malu, Pai do Senhor. Ei, Shirley, Pai do Senhor. Pai do Senhor, Tia Dulce. Pai do Senhor. Saudade. Pai do Senhor.